Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Magic Mics, proudly sponsored by CoolSomething.com, Mana Traders, as well as Twitch subs and Patreon supporters just like you. My name is Evan Irwin. I'm get started each week by saying hello to my two co-hosts, Power Dragon. What's up, everybody? Or should I say, yeehaw, because we're oh, in that season. Oh, That's we're doing right. it. <laughs> Ruben Bressler. It's howdy, partners. It's howdy, howdy. <laughs> howdy so, Yeah, this, this show ain't big enough for the three of us. Except it totally is. Except for barely, it is. barely. We fit in our frames. <laughs> yes. We know our roles. I don't know. Whatever. There we go. Our roles were more, uh, you know, Jason. Yeah, that was a different Wilds set. of Eldraine, right? So, right. yeah, that was a whole thing. Well, or it was that, Smackdown if you were The Rock. Just depends. Nice. Well, uh, <laughs> let me tell you, if you missed our pre-show about all the things, not necessarily magic uh, and some magic. Uh, patrons and subs this channel get access to that extended version early. We, we kick it off with our first pick and our code push. I want y'all to go to coolstuffinc.com, place an order, use the promo code Magic Mics. Very important. Uh, we're doing a, they're doing a big review of sponsorships, and it would help us greatly if you were to head on over to Cool Stuff, make a pre-order, make an order, get some singles, get some supplies, try some different games. Use the code, uh, use the promo code Magic Mics for all of that good stuff and get 5% off everything in your order. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about uh, Outlaws of Thunder Junction. Uh, I wanted to quickly go over uh, the mechanics of the set, uh, as I think that's a good way to kind of talk a little bit about uh, what's going on with all the different mechanics and maybe how we feel about each uh, individual one. Go ahead and bring this up here on our browser. Uh, now, the set contents are a little wonky because they were going to do an Aftermath type set and then Aftermath happened and they don't want to do that no more because Aftermath, was, no, it was a big bag of no. No one liked it. Everything around it was bad. Made people feel bad. So instead of the big expansion set, we get the big expansion symbol on a bunch of these cards. We also have, of course, uh, the commander symbol. We have the OTP expansion symbol. This is the like the the newspaper versions of cards, special cards. And of course we have these special guests because we need one more thing to talk about that way. Uh, but on this plane, they have a lot of outlaws and outlaws are assassins, mercenaries, pirates, rogues, and warlocks are outlaws. Uh, mm -hmm. How do you feel about this kind of new, you know, assemble your party? You know, we've kind of, we say that one, when one term, a pro, you know, goes over all these different creature types. They've done this before. Uh, I don't have a problem with this. I think it's fine. It makes sense. You you got to make a little posse, so to speak, mm. you know, of your your bad guys are going to do bad things. So, like, yeah, I'm for it. I think it's it's flavorful. It fits. We've done this before. Obviously, it's like making a party back in whatever that was. Zendikar, one of those sets. Right. Yeah. Like, so, like, that's cool. I don't, I don't have a problem with it. Yeah. And we've also seen this without a keyword. We've seen this with like Whelming Wave returning everything that isn't a Leviathan, an octopus, yeah. a squid, yeah. and something else to your hand. Right. And I like uh, bunching Kraken, groups together a like a Kraken. There we go. Yeah. I like bunching groups together like this. I think it's interesting. Also, rogues can be in your party and are also outlaws. So there you go. There's that information Remember when for you. we made parties, but not in the D&D &D set? That was a little wild. Right. Dude, I too. still don't understand that to this <laughs> day. because That's it. one of the only other times we will have the ability to put party as a mechanic where it makes right. absolute sense. I like, know. Yeah, I, I but I'm in favor it. of Outlaws. I think it's interesting. I think it's flavorful. I think it's cool. It makes the, um, the, uh, the tribal uh, red-black archetype of draft more interesting and more and easier ultimately to print lets you do more creative things with names and, and uh, creature types and it you know makes the creature type bigger so i'm right. ultimately in favor of yeah. this so without going fully into changeling right, right. You don't is, go full is changeling. making bigger groups right and this this could have been a fix for like if ixalan had kind of group pirates as certain you know, right. types of characters or yeah. creatures yeah. or pirates that could have really helped that set back in the day. Yeah. Uh, now the committing crimes is the most commandery mechanic I've ever seen in my life. If you ever, if you ever talk to me or my son ever again, you've committed a crime. And this is you, if you've targeted any, your spell on your stack is targeted, your graveyard, you, your stuff, anything, they just committed a crime. That's mm -hmm. a whole, that's a whole thing. Yeah. Like I like it as a mechanic. There's just something internal that bugs me about calling it committing a crime. Sure. It's like uh, the I I just 
saying those words out loud in some spaces are not going to be good, <laughs> is, yeah. I think is the way I feel. Right. But he committed a crime. Like it that? is what it is, right? We'll we'll yeah. see how it affects. It's it's probably just a me thing, but it just it just feels weird. That's all. It does. It, I get you. I, I'm I'm on board with what you're saying. I don't think it's that. I don't think what you're saying is weird. Saying that it does feel weird to say this. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think, but in, we'll probably get used to it and over it. Exactly. Eventually. That's and, sort of how I feel about it. Right. You're gonna have this in mixed company. You know. Are we able to commit enough crimes to make it work? Yeah, exactly. That and like that could be a thing that you could say now. And right. It'll be a little weird. And also, out. there's the barrier of entry of like, "Hey, mom, I want to buy this set of magic cards." And then they're like, "The first card you see is if you committed a crime this turn, <laughs> yeah, you get a exactly. benefit." And then, and then mom will be like, mm, oh, "Maybe so not for you." Crimes? I don't want to commit crimes. It right. is also funny that the meat hook massacre is not a crime. That's true. That. That is amusing. I hadn't thought lots about of cards that, but that, that are, is hilarious. They're crimes and it's funny, or they should be crimes and they're not. Right. I mean, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now. Uh, because they just decided that, that targeting things was crimes all of a sudden. Sure. Uh, I like it. And you got spree cards. We're going to talk about some of them, so I'm not going to talk necessarily about Final Showdown here because we're talking about it later. But uh, spree is a new keyword found on several modal cards in the set. For God's sakes, they've made so much modal things. Yeah. They finally said, okay, we made a new mechanic around things being modal where you have to pick a mode for it to be modal. And by the way, you do have to pick a mode on the spree card. You can't just pay one white for final showdown and add to your storm count and say, go right. Like you got to do something. You got to choose an option, but uh, they have a little plus in the corner, which is its own weird thing. Like the little graveyard icon for things in the graveyard um, that have flashback, for example. Uh, so that's different. And ultimately modal things are here period and if you damn near have a commander that's based around them at this point also in the set yeah i don't i don't mind modal cards existing though like getting more flexibility on a card for another couple of mana or whatever like yeah that's fine yeah and i think they're great i think that every every one of these i mean we've also had what was the cycle the commands yeah. Um, there was like Dromoka's commands and yeah, yeah. the one I'm thinking the of the collective ones, the collective brutality. Collective. That. That's the one I'm thinking yeah. of. Yes. Uh, sort of like with the escalating or, you know, mm -hmm. selecting individual. I mean, this is not that big of a, big of, of a difference. breakthrough. No, in but I mean, that we've had like three different cycles of charms, I think. And those yeah. are all a thing. Right. And then there's also the a commander charm. in this set yeah. that cares about modal spells. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so, uh, and, and for what it's worth, you know, the converted mana cost of these spells is the cost in the top right. Final Showdown will always be a one CMC card when it's on the stack, when it's in your graveyard, because okay. these are additional costs. And you It's going to feel real one. bad when I spend, what is this, Seven eight mana, mana, eight mana. To f eight mana to fully kick a Final Showdown, and it gets, like, miscast or mentally misstepped. <laughs> but it's going to feel fine when I search it up with my Mimeomancer. It will, Fair. and uh, you can search it up with what's the blue spell seeker? I think it is. Uh, oh, oh yeah, get you can a, also get one mana yeah. or less out of your library. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, really good. So those are neat. Uh, you got mounts and saddle, and listen, this is oh, a yeah. family program. We're not okay. going all to the mounts nice. and the saddles. I'm saying, listen, this is part of the community. I was very excited about mounts and saddles, and there's nothing wrong with that. We're just not talking about remember it. Remember how I off just before we started, I mentioned there were furries, and now you're talking about get to mount the saddles on some of the. I'm Look, just man, you know, listen, I, I, I love all the friends <laughs> who love that stuff. There's nothing okay, wrong. Okay, it's all right. That. I got plenty yeah, of friends, don't, especially don't, that are Don't, uh, that are don't people, keyword so. ability shame. I, I'm not trying to do that. Not now. even going so, to. So this is interesting in that this is sort of like, cool. um, and like a vehicle. Or enlist. It, but it's sort of like enlist and it's sort of like a vehicle. Yeah. But it's not really both. Or not, I'm sorry, it's not really either. Right. And mm -hmm. it's kind of worse than both. But yes. it's a cool ability. And it's, I'm glad that it exists in the in the Western set. Well, to explain it, the the creatures if that can be saddled will be mounts as a creature type. So Cat Beast yeah. mount for trained uh, Arnix is on the screen. It has Saddle 2. They all have Saddle X. Tap any number of other creatures you control with total power of that X or more. This mount becomes Saddled until end of turn and Saddle only as a sorcery. So just like crewing. Uh, and a lot of them say, a lot of them kind of make you attack. Like when this is attacked while Saddled right. uh, is a big thing. And some don't care, but most of them do that I've seen. Um, yeah, I just don't understand like why... It's I have and something may be revealed later, but like, why yeah. did they have to be as a sorcery? Yeah, 
I mean, well, like, you can't crew at an instant speed. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you no, can. crew at instant speed. Why won't you be able to yeah, saddle? Yeah, you can totally saddle, crew at instant saddle, speed. Because you, you can saddle crew only on, as a sorcery. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's weird. but you can crew on defense. You can crew at instant speed. Because there are some cards that say... Because mounts can attack regardless of whether they are mounted or not. Correct. Correct. And there are some mounts, for example, the Gitrog Ravenous Ride, mm-hmm. that say when you deal combat damage to an opponent, do something with a saddled creature. Right. So yes. being able to go in with no recourse and then saddle it once the ability's on the stack would be kind of BS. Would be a little So that's why I'm it's okay raised with that. that way. <laughs> and I, I understand them slowing it down in that regard so they can make different abilities that like trigger differently which is kind of neat. Mm-hmm. Um, now, lastly here, we have Plot. Now, Plot is sort of the inverse of Foretell. Foretell, you would pay some mana, put it off to the side, you could play it later for its Foretell cost. This one, you're kind of paying for the whole spell-ish because you're going to get the whole spell. So for playing the heist, you can pay two blue and two generic mana for the uncommon sorcery that says surveil three. If you have no cards in hand, then draw three cards. Now that generally sucks because you're probably not going to have, you know, zero cards in hand unless you plot right. it for a blue and three generic mana. So it's even easier to plot. You pay that you exile the card from your hand, cast it as a sorcery on a later turn without paying its mana cost plot only as a sorcery. And that's actually super important. It's something we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, but the idea that you can, pay for the spell, and then later it gives you bonuses and benefits for knowing that you can cast that spell for free later, I think is super rad. And there's a bunch of really cool cards and creatures with this ability. Yeah, I'm not sure what all the design space looks like since we've only seen, I don't know, like 15% of the set or something at this point. Mm-hmm. But there's some fun stuff. I mean, there's even, a, I think it's a dwarf that's like a 3-3 three, three for 3, but you can, I was going to say foretell it, you can plot it for 4, and then just shock something. Yeah. And then you can just get a 3 3 later, you know, like, which is kind of cool. Like, I mean, I think it's sure it's not, but it's like one more mana to do a sorcery speed shock and then you just get the creature next turn, right? So the flexibility in the stuff is kind of cool, I think. I didn't, I didn't necessarily notice a lot of sort of plot cards I think are super pushed for constructed. There's a green card, a green creature that gives like plus three, plus two when it gets plotted yeah. and when it enters the battlefield. It's kind of nuts, mm-hmm. um, yeah. which I thought was neat. But ultimately, I think this is a limited format like mechanic and yeah. it seems for the most part really well with a lot of cool interactions. Uh, and I think that's neat. For the um, most part, plot is going to be a limited mechanic. There are a couple of cards. Uh, there's a new draw seven that is. I think there's be... some that are going to get played and constructed for sure. Yeah. There's also a red creature with haste that gets a bonus when you play instance and sorceries. When you play, so sometimes spells. you're gonna, huh? When you play non-creature spells, like yeah, non-creature it's spells, it's yeah, prowess. Yeah. So there's a world spells. where you want to plot that. There's a world where you want to stack up a turn for a bunch of storm triggers. You know, right. but in general, it's kind of a meaningless keyword. In my I mean, opinion, I, I I disagree. I think it's actually going to have a big impact. Yeah, I don't the think way it's meaningless. We, actually, I think it's going to find a, a home in a couple of builds. I I think sort of the way I would put it is that this feels like the most important mechanic for the limited environment of OTJ. Mm. For that for that plotting, you're plotting, I'm plotting. There, I will agree with you on that. We're that doing makes timing sense. things. That to me is like one of the really unique things about the set. I'll tell you though what I do like about it. You know, like using that green creature as an example. There are situations where you're like, okay, I still want some extra damage this turn, but I don't necessarily want to overcommit to the board because there's a good chance there's going to be a sunfall or whatever, right? Right. So you can be like, let me pay my two or three, whatever it is. I'll just pump a creature this turn, put you down to four or whatever. And now next turn, I have a creature ready to go that's also free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? So I think that type of stuff is where it's going to, depending on which way the metagame goes and, you know, obviously what all the rest of the plot cards are. I think a handful of them could show up in some decks, actually. Nice. Well, speaking of cards that can show up in decks, Ruben, tell us about your first card uh, you want to talk about tonight, and I'm going to try to get it on the screen ASAP. Sure. Uh, there's a, well, I mean, one of the other mechanics that we didn't really talk about is that the return of deserts. Um, Hazazon players of the world rejoice. We have so many more deserts coming, uh, and some Desert Matters commander stuff. And Buy your camel stocks now. There you go. <laughs> All of your... Uh, um, 
Oh, what was that other car? Ollie from like Cairo the Ramanop or ruins and all of that like, stuff. What was Ollie from Cairo? Couldn't be built damaged no, by desert. I don't think desert. so. No. There's some weird car. But we have a bunch of new deserts. We have a we have a series of ten dual land deserts that ping for one gunshot lands. Very they they commit first. crimes. I don't think that. Yeah, they do commit. Oh, crime land. That would be good. Or crime lands. Yeah. Crime lands. <laughs> Um, I'm going to call one Los Angeles. I'm going to call one Chicago. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, what have we done? Bruh. Bruh. Um, anyway, one of the non-basic crime lands that you can get is Arid Archway, which is a uh, about land crime land in some ways. Mm. It enters the battlefield tapped, and it taps to add two, gene- uh, two wingdings to your mana pool. So it's a bounce land, like a Simic growth chamber mm. or an, a, um, uh, what was it? Let's say Selesnia sanctuary, the bounce yep. lands from original. The Karoo lands. Yeah. The Karoo lands. There yeah. we go. Uh, and this one is a desert itself. And it also says when it enters the battlefield, return a land you control to its owner's hand. If another desert was returned in this way, surveil one. And I'm a big fan of surveil on lands. We all love a little bit of extra value on our temples and our surveil uh, duels. So, yeah, I wanted to talk about this card. I think it's a great one. Yeah, it got me thinking, like, are all the deserts going to come into play tapped? Because, I mean, I think all the previous deserts we have also came into play tapped. Sounds right. So, like, well, not the previous ones. The Amonkhet ones? Were, didn't some of those come into play tapped? Or did oh, that's true. There was a couple of those. They pinged you, didn't they? When that was, what yeah, was something like that. Life. Yeah. <laughs> So, like, we could get some. And I think that's going to be the biggest difference on how many decks really play a bunch of deserts. Mm-hmm. Or just, like, how many of them you can get that you can just use. But yeah. I think this card is actually pretty sweet. Even if it's nothing else, you're just bouncing your other desert to deal another point of damage next turn. You know, that's fine. And you're not falling behind on mana because it's giving you two colorless. So that's actually pretty yeah. cool, too. Yeah, there nothing, were, uh... nothing I love more than it looking at a hand that has two lands in it, but one of them is a bounce land. So that I'm like, oh, I still do have three mana. Oh, That's yeah. Oh, yeah, we're doing great. I mean, Scavenger Grounds was still huge, which yep. came into play untapped. Uh, and those lands were that made you pay a life or they could tap for colors yeah. and all that. So, yeah, this card's really cool and a bunch of great deserts and should power up, you know, and power on your, your bigger uh, mana decks. Uh, what's your next card? I mean, my next card, of all of my cards are common or uncommon. Uh, I think they're all uncommon, actually. And they are all cards where I'm like... Yeah, that's an ability I'm interested in and have always been interested in as a Magic player for 20 years. And Honest Rutstein has two lines of text that I'm like, yeah, that's just an ability I want on a Magic card. And then another ability I want on a Magic card. Mm -hmm. Card's great. Honest Rutstein is three mana for a 3-2. Generic, black, green for a legendary creature, Human Warlock. Two relevant creature types, apparently, Mm -hmm. uh, because now we have Outlaws. When Honest Rutstein enters the battlefield, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. That's just a grave digger. Right. That's just, you know, draw a card kind of. Basically. You can loop it with other Honest Rutsteins. And we're not done. Creature spells you cast cost a generic less to cast. Heck yeah, buddy. We're, we're in the market for some discounts. So also this art is incredible. I Dude, am such a big fan. I felt that way for fan. so many cards in this set. Like yeah. the artwork is so good. Yeah, the artwork's great. Yeah. Yeah, this big, uh, big fan I, of Honest Rutstein. I, I like this card. I mean, it's cool that it has that ability on a legend, so you're not going to get to stack them, which I think is kind of a neat design of like, you can get one less, right? Like, that's that we're willing to give you that. Yeah. We're not going to let you go crazy. Well, I think really where this card's going to like succeed or fail is going to be how well it fits into some type of human or warlock component of a deck. Yeah. Because I think there's, we're reaching the point, but I don't know, this is going to be like the 10th set that's available in in standard or something to be like this giant be number. Yeah. But we have so many good things at three, four, and five mana and almost every color combination now. Because I mean, hell, this one you still have Glissa or whatever, right? The three, three yeah. death touch, first strike, you know. Right. So like I think if this can get played though, it is a really cool card. Like really... you know make everything else cheaper. Ah, so good. I, I think it and I this is also one of those cards that like, yes, it's a legend, 
but playing additional copies of itself could just get you death dies triggers that you're looking for. Yeah, that's true too. And get him the other copy back. You know what I'm saying? You can just cycle through them if that's what you want to do for two man at that point because you're just playing another copy of himself, get the first you know one back and yada yada. And maybe that's a you know a loop you want to do or something for two yeah. mana. Uh, this is a card that also triggers Insidious Roots, which has been a giantly fun card. I literally was there about to say it. That's the card I was thinking of. If you get the two roots. of these and you have like six mana. You're like, I'll pay one, let it die. Let's With go. that trigger on the stat, get it back. Pay one, let it die. Or like pay that. two, let it die. Right. Exactly. So I think that's kind of cool. Uh, Insidious Roots has been super duper fun. You haven't tried that deck out. You should. Um, but yeah, Ruben, what is your last card? Last card um, is I have it here because it has a very specific, like it's from a, a famous lineage. Its parents are are super famous. It's got some, uh, you know, some. It's is got this a, a nepo baby nepotism. magic card? This is the nepo baby <laughs> magic card. It, you see the word boots on an equipment right. that does this, right. and you're like, all right, okay. And I think that there's a world where lava spur boots is not. It's not going. It's never going to be lightning greaves. It's never going to be swift foot boots. Right. But it's close enough. One generic mana. One mana for the casting cost. One generic mana for the equip cost, and the equip creature gets plus one, plus oh, and haste, and ward one. So we don't fully get to be immune from our opponents. We don't never get targeted, but we do get to search for it with a Trinket Mage. We do get to search for it with an Urza's Saga. Mm. We do get to pay half price to be able to get this into play. And Ward 1 is not nothing. Ward 1 is still going to get you there a lot of the time. And oh, by the way... I mean, I'm happy with just a Strider Harness, you know? If I'm just paying a mana to give a creature haste, that's still put, giving my commander haste. That's still getting my combat damage in, so I'm happy. Yeah, I'm with you. I like this being on board after a sweeper and just, okay, every creature now just says, kicker one, you have haste. All right, and you get a plus, and one, plus one just plus because. And harder yeah. to guard, you know what I mean? Like, it's a bunch of that stuff, so. Yep. I'm good with it, man. I think I think this is a could be a fun card for a few different decks. Yeah, this is a super cool card because, you know, how kind of low can you go? How cheap can you get it? And then at that point, like that Ward 1, like you said, it's no joke. You're playing real Thalia in play. It's really annoying. Like, yeah, that kind of is what that gives you that one creature. And I'm OK with that. All right. Power Dragon, what's your first card? My first one's one I'm going to hate playing. And I'm also going to play against it and just be miserable. But... Archangel of Ties, it's a colorless and three white mana, so a big four mana there, mm -hmm. for a three, five flying angel, no surprise. But as long as it's untapped, creatures can't attack you or planeswalkers unless they pay a one for each one of them. And if it's attacking, your opponent can't block unless they pay one for each one that wants to block. This thing is annoying as hell. It's very in creature annoying. fights, even more so in dupl duplicate, because it's not legendary. Mm -mm. Like, this thing is going to be a nuisance. Like, this is, like, this just causes so many problems in combat math and how you can get through or not. And like, yeah, this card's cool. Yeah, this is a card from Magic Origins at 15 to 20 bucks, depending on where you're trying to get a copy. Uh, so mm -hmm. there's plenty of value there. It's a mythic angel. Everyone loves angels. So even if it never actually gets to the metagame or whatever, it's going to be in everybody's angel deck. Got some awesome art, I mean, as we've already talked about. I played about. this in standard. Back when it was yeah. in Origins. Oh, hell yeah. And I'll probably give it a shot. I, I want it to be good. I still have four copies, you know, hanging yeah. out or whatever. This uh, is probably also going to be a good commander card for people that sort of got forgotten. Yeah. But now there's going to be more available and be top of mind for people yep. because token decks can't really attack you efficiently anymore. And that art, man, that's... Yeah. yeah. That's some fantastic new art, which is great. Uh, all right, what's your second card? This card, one, you're going to be sad because it looks like there's probably not going to be a Colossal Dreadmaw because there's another Colossal thing in this mm. set. But Colossal Rattle Worm. And I don't know why the stats are the way they are on this I have no card. idea why the <laughs> numbers are, like, yeah. It's because <laughs> of Shouldered. I'm, I'm not joking. I think, I believe they actually Maybe. addressed it on screen, or on the stream, rather, was that it was because of shoulder They wanted to make sure the numbers lined up. Lined up. Well... She has Death Touch anyway, but this thing's a two colorless green green for a six five worm, which is already kind of fine by itself. A it's six amazing. five for four. Yes. But then randomly, if you have a desert, it'll have flash, which might actually be a thing. Could and then thing. it has trample. So awesome. Like if we stop there, this is actually a fine 
good magic card. It's a great magic <laughs> really. card, really. <laughs> yeah. But then when it's in your graveyard, you can pay two mana and exile it to just go search for a desert and put it into play. You just get to ramp for no reason on top of a 6-5 for four with uh, trample. And you speed. might might be able to play it at instant speed. I think you could probably this card's definitely. This awesome. Yeah, I think this thing is pre-ordered for 10 bucks for a reason. This card yeah. is real. Like, it's crazy. What are they doing? What is happening? Just <laughs> ramping growth from your graveyard for a desert, but also 6-5 flash trample for four? Craw Worm is is like <laughs> so far outclassed at this point. Oh it's my embarrassing. God. It is embarrassing. Not just that. Think about the fact that the green decks can now play six power thing on three, six power thing on four. Who knows what you want to play on five? Man. Right? Like, you, this is silly. This, this I mean, is silly. These numbers are silly. The fact that all the deserts, the dual land deserts, deal one damage means you get to rampant growth, deal one damage. Yep. For, yeah. For two mana. They don't charge you three mana. It's just two yeah. man. It's just rampant growth out of your graveyard. It's absolutely ridiculous. Right. That's the other thing is so there's also an uncommon like hold the uh, hold the format together kind of worm that's like a six six for six that when you discard it you can search for a desert and put it in your hand and gain yeah, three life. Yeah. Nice. So there's a couple of worms that like help fix your desert mana. Sure. This one in particular though you can discard to other effects if you mm -hmm. don't even want to cast yep. it. So you can bitter triumph something and then get your desert later on. Man, I feel like this is like a throwback to Weatherlight, where we had the different worms where like you sack one when it comes into play or whatever. And like, yeah. Except they sort don't of, sort of what this feels like a little bit. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. Harvest Worm and Rogue Elephant. Yeah. 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 They're not embarrassing like they used to be. Now they're right. just yeah, exactly. all upside. This thing, four mana, is you're getting so much. I'm astounded this isn't mythic, like, quite frankly. frankly. For sure. And people are like, you know, well, they they made a uh, an answer to shoulder and white man. They've been making answers to shoulder in like every set since she showed up. Dude, I mean, I will say this though, stepping away for a second, like in standard, Shieldred's not even in that many decks right now, and in yeah. some of them, she's only like one or two copies. Like, she's and, still good, but she's not dominating like she used to be. Yeah, the meta, the meta is going to meta, and this card is sick. What is your last card? My last one's just a really fun one in Gissa the Hellraiser. It's three colorless, black, black for a four four. Legendary Human Warlock. So there's those words again. Uh, this has Ward of Two and Pay Two Life. So they have to pay mana and life to try to kill this, which awesome. I love because it's a tribal lord, or I guess now we call it a typo lord, for skeletons and zombies. So they each get plus one, plus one, and menace. So this is really, really good. And we've needed this because skeletons have not been great, and we have some cards that care about skeletons right now. But then also, whenever you commit a crime, you get to create two tapped, two, two, blue and black zombie rogue, which again, rogue might matter, Man. creature tokens. You can only do that once each turn, though. But Oh, no. Not we pa <laughs> packed about as much as you can pack on this card for five mana. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, the, um, the get two tapped blue and black zombie rogue creature tokens, those don't have decayed. You know what I mean? Nope. Those are just going to stick around and beat you to death. And they're going to be three threes with menace. Right. So you're making two three threes with menace tapped. Oh, no. Like On, on my I, turn and then on your turn. Yep. Well, it could be on my <laughs> turn and on your turn. Right. Yep. When I play her, I commit a crime. I you know deal one to you with my desert. And on your turn, I target you with something. And now all of a sudden, I got four three threes with menace. Huh? Also, Evan, if you can do me a favor and pull up the wanted poster version of this card for the, for the stream folks at home. Just to be, just ah. for friendliness. Hello, everybody. How that are you? That is the most psycho grave digger type yeah. picture you could probably have. That's awesome. It's like waving to the person <laughs> drawing the wanted poster is great. Yeah, it's very. Yeah, this card's awesome though. I think because the problem we've had previously is you get these lords for these different creature types that are just fragile, right? They're like two twos or two ones or just one ones even in some cases. So it's like here you got a big four four. So you're going to have to go to battle with it. If you have an actual go for the throat or whatever, it's going to cost you four mana and two life to get rid of it. Like, this, this great. Thing is a, it's, it's a turn, it's a turn like five with acceleration or a turn six spell because you want to play it and then crime. Play sure. It, yeah. Play a desert, play it, play a spell, play it, you know, pay for Exion sure. mana, whatever, you know. Yeah, and there are some ways to, to like sacrifice a creature deal, a damage to a target kind of effects, mm -hmm. or to make sure that you have a, tr a crime on, on tap for when this comes into play. And you can pretty well set up 
like a festering goblin situation or trigger it on both turns, even without casting a spell. I mean, if you think about it, it's a one card recovery card, right? Like you pay effectively six mana if you have a tapped desert that deals a damage. Right. You get to pay six mana to get a four, four and two, three, threes. Yep. And put 10 power into play immediately after a wrath. Yeah, that's pretty strong. Yeah, that's pretty and strong. you dealt a damage from your land, right? Like, just because. Oh, yeah. Like, uh, and then, you know, we talked about Colossal Rattleworm being, like, it's rare. That's weird. It could be mythic, right? Well, let's talk about that crazy mythic Timmy card with Vaultborn Tyrant. This card is ridiculous. Um, it, it's a seven mana, six, six, two green, five generic mana for a six, six trampling mythic dinosaur. Here we go. Whenever a Vaultborn Tyrant or another creature with power four or greater enters the battlefield under your control, you gain three life and draw a card. So let's talk baseline. Seven mana, six, six, gain three, draw a card. We're not done because this is magic in 2024. When Vaultborn Tyrant dies, if it's not a token, create a token that's a copy of it, except it's an artifact in addition to its other types. Meaning... When you kill it, I draw a card and I gain three life again. I I don't even understand. I, my brain break. My Timmy brain can yeah. only take so much value. You know what I mean? It's like the the jackpot's going off. And I don't. I'm I'm blinded by the lights. Man, this card has to end up selling for a significant amount of money because every dinosaur commander deck is going to want this card. Absolutely. Like there's no way like this is just extra value for every card you play. For sure. For sure. It effectively has undying. It is a Garrick's await. What is it? Garrick's awakening. Garrick's reckoning. Yeah. On a six, six. Yeah. And it also gains you life. This would have been in the big score. This would have been in the bonus sheet or the bonus set, the aftermath style thing before they recombined them all together. So this is one of our bonus uh, mythics that we get some extra months out of. Uh, I, I mean, seven man is a hefty price tag, but boy, howdy, are you getting a lot for the bang for your buck? You know what? This fits the six power theme deck <laughs> perfectly. <laughs> uh, Gary's Amazing. Uprising was what you're trying to think of. This, this Uprising. Is, thank That's you, Arju. Um, yeah, this card's just silly. So much just fun. Bananas. Uh, so my next card here, we talked about a little bit earlier because it was the example spree card, but Final Showdown is the real deal. This card is already pre-ordering for like $30. It will be one of the best mythics in the set. Like whenever there is a mythic magic card that costs one or two mana, scared isn't the right word, but I'm like, oh God, what's it going to do? Because Final Showdown is quite real it is one white mana plus with spree so as an instant a one mana mythic instant with spree you choose one or more additional costs and yes you must choose one at least one so plus one generic mana all creatures lose all abilities until end of turn that's just two mana you wreck whatever they're probably trying to do okay or plus one generic mana choose a creature you control it gains indestructible until end of turn so you know if you have to it's a combat trick. But oh no, for the big one, the last option for one white and then plus two white and three generic mana, so six mana total, destroy all creatures. And because you do the abilities from top to bottom, that's the first thing, if you pay for all the modes and you pay five plus one plus one, you play the, the eight mana total here, all creatures lose all abilities, you choose a creature that's gonna be indestructible, and then you destroy all of them. Card is at the end of their turn. You can do this at the end yeah, of someone's I was gonna turn. Say, instant speed is the big thing. Oh god, it's a huge card. thing. It's a gigantic thing. It's what turns this card from like a two dollar mythic to a thirty dollar mythic. Yeah, I I also see some weird things happening that people may not predict with this, where they're gonna like remove all abilities from creatures, and then your opponent's like brutal Cather is gonna die, and then sure. you're not gonna get your thing back. <laughs> like. That Some silly right. things are going to happen because of this card, which are going to be hilarious to watch. Yeah. But but no, the card is really good. I, I get why it's going for a lot of money. You know, part of me is like, did we need a, yet another sweeper in standard? Because, you know, every set's got like three, four of them. But this is going to, I mean, this is going to be one of those cards. It's just going to be valuable for a long time. Uh, and there's, there's no way around it. I'm good with a six mana sweeper, especially sure, one sure. that's instant speed. Like this is definitely different than most sweepers we see. Different in that it's a combat trick if you need to use it early. It's a dress down if you want to impact yeah, something yeah. in the middle of the combat. 
Right. Um, you know, there's a bunch of stuff going on with this card. I was a big fan of the card Route back in yeah. Invasion Standard, which was a five mana destroy all creatures that can't be regenerated. But if you paid two more mana, you could play it for instant speed. So seven mana destroy all creatures at the end of your opponent's turn. If you do that here, you get to do that, but then you also get to save one of your creatures or you get to take indestructible text off your opponent's creatures or take their when this creature dies text off your opponent's creatures too. Yeah, this card is definitely real. It's definitely very good. And the fact that it costs one is usually a boon because oh, you can go search for it with your Mimeomancer. You can go search for it with your Spellseeker. You can return it to your hand in a, in some interesting ways. So uh, Final Showdown is a very good card. See, this is why that Colossal Worm needs to have Flash. <laughs> well, I, I, was, I was literally about to say, I think what we've seen is that, yes, there's lots of rats. But the more wraths they make, the better the creatures can be. Yeah, you have you know, to. This have is, to, yeah. and it's a lot of where we've seen a ton of incidental life gain. Like, literally, uh, just spoke about on Vaultborn Tyrant. It's making you have 23 life at that point. So you have to do 23 points of damage. So you can make creatures more powerful. Yeah. And even the spells a little bit, but they don't really like to push the spells. But you can definitely make the creatures more powerful if you keep making that starting life total 23, 26, 29 with like food tokens or, you know, incremental life link or the tyrant randomly gains you life or whatever. So I think that's why they've continued this. Like there's going to be a bunch of rats because the creatures are really, really, really good. So there's got to be some balance there. I'm not sure. Oh, sure. I'm just thinking like something. a three year standard. We don't need like, as it's going to end up being 12 to 14 high in quality playable sweepers. Like, I mean, yeah. that's a lot for, for one it is a lot. Uh, standard I agree, environment. I, I understand. I think in many ways that I think you would rather have too many wraths and not enough. Yeah. And I think that's where we're Fair. at. Uh, lastly here, I want to talk about Avon Interrupter. Uh, this card is awesome and I love it. Uh, because for two white and a generic mana, it is a rare 2-2 two -two bird rogue with flash and flying. And when it enters the battlefield, you exile target spell. It becomes plotted. Spells your opponents cast from graveyards or from exile cost two generic more to cast. We got to break this down, y'all, because there's an important reason. This isn't just, uh, what was the one from modern that exiles the spell for or less? Um, oh, uh, the spirit. The, yeah, the spirit that does that. Somebody yeah. in, the, in chat will help me. But either way, uh, this yeah. destroys counter spells because plotted cards must be cast on your turn at sorcery speed. So if it hits Ooh, a counter spell, interesting game is game is over. That counter spell is it's gone. Uh, spell queller, thank you, Arju. So spell queller was one thing to exile a you know a card for the four mana cost less, and they brought it back and so on. This kind of does something similar in that they can play it again. But again, counter spells, I don't think so. Yeah. Or things that don't have targets anymore, but you're just going to sit out there and do nothing. And yeah. I just love the hell out of this card. Turn off your opponent's combat tricks is pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, get rid of a Settle the Wreckage. Counter spells, I mean, anything that would be counter count, cast on your turn, big right. deal. Sort of like anything that Spell Queller or Elite Spellbinder like has pretty much universally seen some amount of play. Right. I see no reason why this would change that. Mono white is a huge deal for something that has a counter spell like effect as well. So very good card. Yeah, yeah it's forever. almost its own counter spell of sorts, depending on the game state, right? Or the situation. So, right. you know, your opponent goes to, I don't know, wrath of the board or whatever. You're like, yeah, sure. How about next turn? <laughs> right? like, well, I mean, and then they, we'll just attack. they go to play a final showdown, right? And you yeah. go, no. Now you have to play your final showdown at sorcery speed, and now it costs two generic more beyond every other thing you're going to play for that spell. And that, to me, wrecks a lot of what people would be trying to do in that regard, which to me makes this a really fun and interesting card. So uh, that is our first picks for OTJ. Let's go ahead and move on here to gather the townsfolk. Thanks to our sponsor, Mana Traders where you can get the best tool to enhance your magic online experience. Use the code MagicMikes underscore T84 for 10% off your next subscription with Mana Traders and tell them we sent you. Uh, let's move on here uh, to gather the townsfolk, some, some community type stuff going on. Uh, we talked about this a little bit in the pre-show uh, where Loading Ready Run is going to have uh, what they are calling uh, a OTJ pre-launch showcase. 
And as we were discussing, you know, the, you know, speaking of things that have to kind of, uh, you know, thread a needle, uh, is the idea that the Wizards is not necessarily sponsoring this, you know, this uh, endeavor. And uh, as a result, you don't have the normal kind of special guests that have are coming in, but they are still going to do uh, Outlaws of Thunder Junction gameplay. They still have the product, you know, in their hands, regardless of what was going to happen beyond it. And, you know, the... There's, there's things that are pulling here. One is this is a very important event for Loading Ready Run multiple times a year. It has incredible subs, incredible sub trains. They do that really cool thing where they thank every sub during the stream at the end of it, which is awesome. Uh, but at the same time, you don't want to come into a scenario where you tell Wizards, we don't need that help. We just need the product and we'll kind of take it from there. And I don't want that to sort of, you know, be a thing because in the, in the grand scheme of things, it's pennies in the bucket. But if they're looking to chop numbers and take away things and we don't really need to pay for that type mentalities, that's what I'm afraid can happen in this scenario. Yeah. And if it comes to that, you kind of go, OK, well, maybe the fact that they're doing some draft and maybe they're doing some commander that they don't normally do because it's usually like a sealed thing or whatever. Maybe mm -hmm. that has some appeal to more people and get some more eyeballs like. And that could help alleviate some of that, hopefully. But, yeah, it's a weird spot, right? Because you want them to be super successful in whatever they're doing. Right. But at the same time, if you're too successful, then you like probably the are wizards on your will own take you here. for granted. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's tough. Awkward. It's a tough spot to be in. I mean, yeah. Uh, and obviously, we're not saying that we, you know, we're not. We want this to be the most successful thing they've ever made. We want everything that they've ever made to be the most successful thing we ever made. It's right. a it's a weird needle to thread, however. And I think that everybody understands of if Wizards sees that they're still successful in getting free advertising, then why would they can why would they in the futures do anything but send product? Um, I do think that having the the celebrities there and the community members there helps, and I think that anyone who's taken marketing one hundred and one understands that. So I, hopefully, if they see that it's a success, even without the usual the extra bells and whistles, they will still be like, oh. That's our bad. We're going to continue to make this thing that is one of the most enjoyable community events on Twitch continue to be an advertising tool for our product. Yeah, I think for Wizards, a lot of times it's going to be, is there a certain type of messaging they want, right? Because that's the biggest thing that you can control, making sure certain things get seen, certain things get mentioned and talked about. And that kind of comes with that price a little bit, too, of the things they're paying for. So I don't know how important they think that still is. But then the other side of that is if loading, writing, run isn't under some type of contract or whatever, they can be more free flowing and kind of do whatever they want with their stream. And maybe that makes a difference. Who knows? We'll see. Yeah, it's tough because I never want to root against them for any you know, yeah, reason. Of course not. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, and, and if, if anything, I think the best uh, way for this to actually happen is that after the, you know, the, the, the Friday of the big Friday stream that they do at the end of that stream, if they're able to announce that they have secured the contract from Wizards for the rest of the year, Boy, that to nice. me that would that would be aces. That would be like sure you did it. That's the best scenario. You couldn't make it here, but you did what you could. But you're definitely going to be doing it full full you know stop for the rest of the year. That's awesome. Let's make that happen. Um, all right. So let's move on here. Uh, definitely want to call out, of course, Ristic Studies. Uh, he had another awesome video called The Red Temperance where he talks about faithless looting that showed up, the the kind of the odd faithless looting that uh, a very unique, uh, you know, uh, interpretation, I guess, as it were. Uh, this was the uh, Strixhaven Mystical Archive version. Right. I'll go ahead and pull that up on the screen. If you guys don't remember or if you weren't around back then, uh, let me tell you. Uh, the first thing that came back from this card, the very first thing I ever saw on the internet about this card was, is this real? Yeah. A lot of people didn't even think this was an actual piece of artwork on an actual magic card. And he kind of goes over, you know, the artist and the thinking behind it and how it works and why it works, what happened as a result. And, you know, as I was mentioning in the pre-show, I think there's also an amount of this was early 2021 Everyone had lived for a year under the guise of we could die, you know, at any point in time or something we can't control. And I think nerves were kind of frayed and this showed up and everyone was just like, weird, different. Ah, I don't like it. Right. You know? And just kind of went crazy. Everybody's uh, everybody's fuses were shorter. 
And I think that this was definitely a time capsule about this art. Also, this artist has done more done art more. in Magic. They oh, were yeah. responsible for a Harmonize in the same uh, the same, the same set. set. Mm -hmm. yeah. They did Social Climber from uh, Capenna. Yep. They did a number of the sort of stained glass legends from Dominari United. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's th for some reason, this one exactly was the card that got latched onto. Mm -hmm. uh, the artist, Carly Mazur, uh, takes it in stride, though. Uh, I've seen a number of her like reactions on social media that were like, I don't care what anybody thinks, which is what you want from an artist. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she got paid thing. either way, so yeah. whatever. It's true. It's so She's funny. already cashed the bag. It's all I right. remember at the time hearing, I, I forget where I read it. I, I think she had an Instagram where she was just like, why does everyone care about this? I'm making my art. And that and and to be to have that level of confidence to just mm -hmm. ignore because it was loud, the vitriol that came mm -hmm. out about this. I am. It's not my favorite, but I also was not angry that it existed. Yeah. Um, I just had so, a thought. Imagine if that artwork would have come out last month with everybody so concerned about AI or whatever. Wild. Oh my god, that would. Oh. Well, there's one thing, thing that you can guarantee. <laughs> this is not artificially intelligent. This yeah. is regular artist creation. Sure. You can definitely tell that this was not AI, in my opinion. Oh yeah. I mean, this was someone who was. <laughs> who did things with mixed mediums in ways that was very unique and very cool. Um, and I, you know, they, they mentioned maybe a few regrets in that, like, it's not 100% clear this is a female. They wanted me to put some lipstick or something on there to really give that impression. Um, but again, the fact that they had artwork in the same set and no one was calling that out, you know, and artwork later, it was fine. Whatever. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Sam from Ristic Studies is great at capturing moments in time in one magic card. And this is yet another example. Absolutely. So, um, Want to uh, jump ahead here because uh, we've been going on for just a minute, and uh, want to talk. It's all about right. People love listening to our sultry voices. It's That's all right. right. Yeah, yeah. We bring you the. <laughs> well, we're going to talk about some desperate ravings. Reset the plagiarism clock, everybody, because we got another one. And trouble in pairs was a commander card right. from mm -hmm. uh, Martin yeah. Karlov Manor, and uh, it seemed to have a. A uh, very uh, close likeness to uh, Donato Giancarlo's uh, uh, image from Cyberpunk in like the early 2000s or late 90s. Yeah. Something like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it when you see them side by side, they copied and pasted. Like they did a little stuff in the background, changed a little few things. But like that arm on the left hand is, is the same arm that's flipped around on the character on the right of this uh, flipped image of the uh, Trouble in Pairs, for example. Uh, and the full image is available over here to the left and the right of you guys to see kind of what they did and what they changed. And they, they, they just copied it, man. And the yeah. here's, here's my problem with this, other than the obvious just plagiarism, right? Mm -hmm. But it's... You didn't even go through the effort of like changing the proportions of the body, which we have technology to do that. And that would have been fine. Right. You, you could have been like, no, I drew this. See, the, the chest is larger and the head is smaller or whatever the case is. Right. It's, you left it the same. Like you literally changed the elbow position and uh, left everything else the same. Like maybe did a little bit on, on the, the clothing, on the artwork. The other is you still left a doorway archway right next to it, which was in the original art. And you left the stairs in the back that don't even make sense in the new piece of artwork. Like you, like what are you even doing? And then it's the artist who has been known in magic for two decades plus now. Mm -hmm. Right. And you're going to be making that card available in a magic, the gathering set where they already have a fan base. Like it, none of it makes any sense. Like it's, yeah, it's, it's beyond hard. lazy. We've seen, so I'm, here's my struggle where we've seen magic art get printed that later was revealed to be blatant plagiarism, or at least easy to uh, identify copying and pasting, or at least borrowing. Right? right, we've seen it mm -hmm. a couple yeah. times from Tumblr. We've seen it a couple times from Deviant Art. Now we get it from Cyberpunk 2020, which was released in 1995 from a magic artist who's got hundreds of pieces in Magic: The Gathering himself, Donato Giacola. Right. So on the one hand, yes, shame on the artist. 
Like, obviously, th- I mean, they've deleted their Instagram. This person is not going to get any more work from. Oh yeah, they're done. Goes. Like and you're F- done. Fade is is one hundred percent done, and it's unfortunate because you can see they've done a bunch of cards. They did all of the the Gatewatch yeah. baseball we'll, cards. Won't be things. doing any more right. Magic the Gathering cards. Did a bunch or D and D art for that matter. And that sucks. Yeah. But yeah. and but this is also I will point out a recent advent. This is a thing that has occurred a lot in the last five years and i can't recall it happening before then Mm. and the re and i want to posit a couple of reasons why and i think that the most important reason why is because there's too many new pieces of art being required because of all of these new products and every like there's you know 10 times as many cards being printed five times as many cards being printed and they Mm. all need art and if you're a starving artist literally a painter a fantasy painter who wants to do things, but you can't reach the deadline. So you've got this combination of being overworked and then being a a plagiarist. And they're both bad. Obviously one of them is worse, but they're both bad. I mean, this sounds like Jason Felix all over again. But the thing is though, like, you know, as I do, if you're an independent contractor, you just don't take some gigs. You have to yeah, say no. It's, it's so I mean, hard to say no. Yeah, but that's on you. Like, but yeah, you that is on them. Down it's on them. So you can get and the Hasbro money career. or whatever. Because right, they're yeah. paying better than a lot of other places. Right. So you're getting paid well, but you're trying to cut a corner. You're like, this is from the 90s. No one's going to notice this or whatever. Right. Even though the artists are still making you know art right now. Uh, and it calls into question everything they've done before. You know, how much of what they've done before is taken from somewhere else. All of a sudden, it makes people go and sort of try to find what they yep. did on those other cards that could have been taken elsewhere. Um, you know, it, it hurts, you know, your credibility. You only get that reputation one time and yeah, you can only you, sell your reputation once. And the thing is now everybody's more connected. Everybody's more active on socials. Yeah. There's more ways to compare artwork and way to search. You can reverse image search stuff now, right? Mm-hmm. Like a lot of that didn't exist before. So maybe some of this has happened on some level with different games, but it was a lot harder to figure out back in the yeah. day. Now, People can have that discovered and well, in this case, you know, doesn't take very long once we see it. Right. But I mean, yeah. like, you know, they just made the, the t- token uh, creature for detective and murders at Karloff Manor. Like this was an artist that was getting more work from yeah. wizards. Those things were ramping up to just completely shoot their toe off while trying to get something out the door. And that's just, that sucks. And I hate to see it for both Donato and for this artist. Like uh, Again, I'm not saying anybody needs to be plagiarizing, but if you were, there's some other things you could have done to not make it so damn obvious. Like, it was the lazy, like, this was literally the equivalent of like, well, uh, let me copy your homework, but I'll change two answers so they don't know that I copied you. Right. right? I mean, like, <laughs> it's basically what they did. Like, come yeah, on. Like, this is... you could, you could, uh they just because, didn't even try. Right, because you can use, like, studies. You know what I mean? You can yeah. use studies. You can see you know, what other people have done, what other people have drawn. You can totally get inspiration from that. You can, you know, you maybe you can copy maybe the hand shape a little bit. I know a lot of people work with hands a lot, and hands are tough. I totally understand, but the whole composition, the characters, the exactly. way they're standing. They kept the background and everything, and it doesn't do even that, make man. sense in the new image, really. That's right. the crazy part. Oh, it stands out like, like a sore thumb once you see it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's terrible uh, and unfortunate. So, uh, all right. With that, we are going to go ahead and turn the corner to the finisher. Well, hell, the train is about to pull into the station at Thunder Junction and the outlaws are in. We got a lot of ruckus coming to town. So tell me, what are the cowboy Western tropes you're hoping mosey into the saloon, Ruben? Well, I love a Western and I love a Western soundtrack. So I hope that we get a musical tie in and we get an LP featuring classics like Home on the Plains, Call Hide, and of course, the Folsom Prison Mono Blues. Very nice. Man, I wonder how many people know that last reference. <laughs> the Folsom Prison Mono Blues? Yeah. yeah. We're, we're trying. We're trying. Power Dragon. All right, I'm hoping we at least get some direct reference to the classic Westerns, right? That's what we need. With Showdown at the OK Corral, Tombstone, which, by the way, is the best Western I think you should show somebody if they're not into Westerns, The Hateful Eight, and everybody's favorite Western of all time, Firefly, because that's a Western, right? That was totally a Western. Yeah. It was a space Western. 
Absolutely. He's wearing he's wearing lo- like a leather trench coat. Sure. Yeah. Next to some land speeders or whatever. Right. <laughs> Spaceships, whatever. There ain't no outlaws without laws. So I'm hoping they correct the mistakes of past crime sets by giving up sheriffs and marshals and lawbringers and of course burrowing mammals like badgers and ground sloths. Why, you might ask, well, because you can't break no laws when you're having claws. Is this a That's white right. claw thing? Are you white claw? That's a white right claw. Now? That's a white claw joke. Oh, you're you're not going to arrest the badger. So, you That's know. That's right. No claws, man. Judge, <laughs> he's badgering the witness. Oh, my Lord. And that ends another live episode of Magic Mike's. Thanks for joining us here to discuss all things magic. Thank you, Power Dragon. Hey, thanks, everybody. As usual, this was fun. Definitely. Thank you, Ruben. Hey, I'm actually going to take this opportunity to shout out a friend of mine's movie, which is a revenge western set in present day Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Uh, It is called Paradise. It is directed by my friend Max Isaacson and it is free on Tubi. So if you uh, go look uh, up the movie on TBI, that streaming service, uh, it's, it's a, it's just like action packed current day. He described it as an anti-colonial revenge Western. And I'm I'm a big fan of it and you should be too. Full of action. It's a t- it's a good time. Nice. Well, let's move on here to our final slide. I want to thank our sponsor, CoolStuffInc.com, our co-sponsor, Mana Traders, my co-host, Power Dragon, and Ruben Bressler. You guys for watching or listening. I hope you support us at patreon.com slash magic mics. Please follow, like, tweet, favorite, share, subscribe to everything social tells people we exist. Catch us on our exclusive member Discord, live on twitch.tv at Magic Mics, live or taped on our YouTube channel. Follow us on Twitter at Magic Mics Cast and join our TikTok at Magic Mics Cast or join us here next week. Same time, same place for another episode of Magic Mics. Good night, everybody.